Welcome back. You're still watching Finweek Money Matters. Remember, this is the show that helps you manage your finances. Uber is often seen as the ultimate disruptive business model. But what really constitutes disruptive innovation in the business world? And how do these disruptive models look, look, look like in terms of the financial services industry? Well, joining me today to discuss this uh, disruption in South Africa's financial services industry is Anne Cabot Alataza, head of Alexander Ford Research Institute and Patrice Rousseau, Head of Equities at Sunlum Investments. Thank you so much for making the time to join me this afternoon. I think this discussion comes at a very good time, seeing that uh, the 2016 Davos uh, World Economic Forum is just about to wrap up. And of course, uh, the theme there was the fourth industrial revolution, and they did talk about disruptive trends. So Patrice, let me start with you. What exactly do we mean by disruptive technology in the financial services sector? It's um, a very good point that you make. I mean, the fourth industrial re revolution is really how technology is changing our lives globally. Uh, everyone is getting more connected, more mobile, and the pace of change is really changing um, more rapidly because of, every, of um, everything is going digital. So if you bring that to various business models, we've seen um, way back when, how Kodak was disrupted by the digital camera. The whole book industry through Amazon was disrupted when they adopted the Kindle and then Apple bringing in the iPod and then the iPad. But then if we bring it back to the definition of disruption, is it something which is a revolution, the car being replaced, uh, replacing the, the, the horse and, and the like, or is it an evolution? I mean, you could argue that this fourth re revolution that we're talking about at Davos is just an extension of the computer age where computing power is now helping us to connect more deeply and individuals around the world being more accessible and, and getting more information at their fingertips. So um, in this edition, we, we really look at, at the whole topic and there's not one answer, revolution or evolution. I think the, the ju jury is still out there, I would say. Mm. And let's come to you uh, regarding whether the South African financial services industry is able to uh, deal with these uh, disruptive trends. Which uh, sector would you say is a lot more vulnerable to this? Obviously, there have been uh, discussions going on as to whether or not uh, Africa and South Africa is ready to deal with new technologies. Well, let's, let's, let's elaborate on Patrice's definition, because he talked about two different types of innovation. He talked about revolutionary innovation, and he talked about evolutionary innovation. He didn't really talk about what disruptive innovation is. And if you don't understand what that definition is, then some of what is happening in the financial services really has to be, have a question mark about it as to whether it's going to be disruption. And when the, the, the sort of eminence grease behind uh, disruption, the, Clayton Christensen from Harvard Business School really conceptualized the idea. What he basically said is disruption is when you open up something to a whole new market, then that what you do, often by the way you price it, makes that concept accessible to a market that never existed before. So how does that work in South Africa? Well, in South Africa, are we actually opening up financial services to South Africa. And I think that is one of the big questions. Whenever you look at things that are disrupting our financial services industry, if you don't have that question somewhere in the back of your mind, how much is it really changing what the audience is that we're serving, then I think you really have to question, is it a disruption or is it simply just a, a way of evolving what we're already offering one market a little bit more effectively? So that brings us to the next question, and I'd like for you to take this, and then from then on, I'd like to hear uh, Patrice's take on this. Is South Africa able to adapt? And what do these uh, disruptive technologies mean for us as a consumer and as an industry? I'm not sure we have a choice. I think we have to adapt. I think there is a desperate need for South Africa to be able to access the power of financial capability and financial services. Um, we have this massive gap between people focused on debt, I mean, we're trapped in debt, actually, 
uh, and with actually no way to kind of access what really the power of the financial services industry could potentially be. So we don't have a choice. The industry has to adapt or it will be disrupted and somebody will come in here and somebody will offer something to that marketplace just as they have in places like Kenya and other parts of Africa. So I don't think we have a choice. Patrice? I, I do agree with, with Anne. I think the one thing um, that we have to mention is the fact that technology means um, an easier access to a broader population, back to what Anne was talking about for true disruption. If you look at the mobile phone, for instance, a, a whole range of South Africans, I think there's more mobile phones than the whole South African population. That means that a new entrant, and maybe it's not a traditional entrant, maybe a Facebook or Google could come in and start offering financial services in a different way and reach a more, much broader range of the population, as Anne mentioned, and really disrupt the existing players. So if we're not careful, if we're not aware of it, I think disruptive change could well happen quicker than what we uh, anticipate. And could this lead to uh, a broader financial inclusion? And uh, I don't know if you've maybe been speaking to some of the people in the industry. Um, what are some of the uh, innovations that we can expect to see? Well, I think that is, that's the end game, broader financial inclusion. But I think what's happening, and I think this is one of the problems that we have is that when the financial services industry looks at the problem, they're saying, okay, how are my advisors getting taken out? Well, there's robo advice and that's gonna threaten my big distribution um, network of advisors. Or they'll turn to their asset management team and they'll say, well, are things like smart beta, uh, which is a kind of form of passive investing, gonna challenge the investment industry and challenge active managers and change margins and change those types of things. I would call those evolutionary disruptions and that's where I think the industry is paying its most attention. Is it really paying attention to the inclusion problem? You know, is it profitable? And that's the problem. I don't see, they see it as profitable. So your question is, can big companies that already have these legacies and these infrastructures possibly make that, that whole economic shift to be able to be real disruptors or would it have to come from a whole greenfields a kind of a completely new player who doesn't have to support large armies of advisors who doesn't have to support large armies of asset managers sorry i didn't mean to call you an <laughs> army patrice um, <laughs> but it's it's those kinds of considerations that i think really talk to the concept that christensen really meant when he was talking about disruption. Mm -hmm. Patrice, uh, Anne spoke about robo-advisors. Just touch a bit more on exactly what a robo-advisor is. Um, how does, would this work? And you know, at the end of the day, would this result to a lot more job losses in the financial services industry because your job is being done by a robot? Yeah, I think, I think this is a, in, an interesting theme. I mean, we are used in the financial services industry if you need financial advice to go and meet an individual uh, 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 an approved financial advisor who would then look at your financial affairs and and map out a plan to achieve your financial goals but what we are seeing in the rest of the world is that firstly you have a generation especially if you look at millennials who are a lot more tech savvy and who may prefer self-help you go online and you enter your details, you enter your goals, and you have platforms in place with who are, which, which are able to, to really distill um, all your current financial situations and then provide you with a, a kind of plan which you could execute through that plan platform in terms of buying pro products and the like. It's quite restrictive at this point in time because it doesn't look at all your financial needs and objectives, but it provides an alternative, a cheaper alternative to seeing a person. And I guess as you have a generation of younger people, millennials, they might not completely avoid um, the current uh, seeing a uh, financial advisor, but they might choose to check if there's an alternative and be a lot more informed when interacting. And I think that's where Anne has got a good point. If the industry doesn't evolve to understand how it can deliver services more effectively and more cheaply and, and, and add value um, over and above what technology 
just just by going online can offer, I think we run the risk of becoming in, in, extinct, and the traditional model might be replaced by something a lot more nuanced, um, a, a lot more targeted to the market of one to what individuals can do through technology. Oh, thank you so much uh, for joining me. Uh, thank you to Anne Cabot Alatauser, who is the head of Alexander Forbes Research Institute, and Patrice Rousseau, who is the head of equities at Sunlam Investments. Of course, they join us live from our Cape Town studios to weigh in on the disruptive, disruptive innovations in the financial services industry. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Fin Week Money Matters, but we will be seeing you again uh, same time next week. Do remember, though, you can go and get yourself a copy of the magazine. It is available at your nearest store, or you can just go online. Uh, from the Fin Week uh, team and myself, have a great day further.